Hello folks and welcome. Zorin OS 17.1 Core. This will be the non-pro version of the known desktop, standard version. Uh, and don't go by these numbers for the bare minimum specifications. It just happens to be a machine that I found convenient that I wanted to run Zorin on. But in either case, the video for today is going to be talking about auto logins and password links. Your standard graphical um, password length is normally eight characters. I have mine set for one currently. And I'll talk, I'll talk about the reasons why you may want to do this or not. And I'll talk about the same thing with auto logins. Filming in 1080, adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary. This uh, video is geared mostly toward new users, but I think any user for Zorin can probably appreciate uh, some of the details that I'm about to discuss. So uh, let's go back in here again and talk a little bit about uh, not my mouse pointer. Hopefully you don't mind this yellow thing. And uh, accessibility, I have a large text turn on. That's why that human is sitting there. So it makes things a little bit larger. So I'm gonna click on users. So we have uh, Sam as our primary user today and uh, we're just gonna do an unlock. So what's the password for Sam? Well, normally it's an eight character password, but in my case, I made it one. So now you can see that I authenticated myself in this case. Sam is just a made up name. So he's the admin person. So let's first talk about auto logins. Why or why not? All right, so a couple of scenarios here. You could have a laptop or you can have a tower computer. A tower computer is defined as one that has an external monitor. So does that computer ever leave the premises? Maybe you take uh, that laptop to the coffee shop or take it somewhere outside your home. You may want to rethink auto logins. Auto logins can be done just like that. But should you? Now keep in mind, if you lose that laptop or it gets stolen, someone can just open the lid, turn the power on, they get access to all your web browser bookmarks, including possibly your banking information or credit cards, and not to mention your personal files. So again, auto logins, think about it. Now, if you're using a tower computer, I, I wouldn't see a problem with that. Normally you're not lugging that around in your car or coffee shop, but uh, well, maybe some of you are, but uh, more importantly, I would probably think about that. So auto logins are convenient, yes, but uh, What's the second scenario if you have more than one user on the computer, as you can see Mary here? Well, in that case, I would probably turn this off. That way, when you turn off the computer, Mary could log into her desktop instead of the auto login for Sam. Every time Sam is done with a computer, he turns it off and Mary comes in behind and turns the computer on. Well, auto login, for Sam would mean that every time you turn the computer on, it auto logs Sam in. Well, Mary can look at his files if you care about those kind of things, but Mary would like her own desktop. So in this scenario, I would probably leave that off. And again, you can create as many users as you want. Okay, it's pretty simple to do. What about this password business? All right. So let's talk about passwords. I'm gonna pick on Sam for a second. We've already unlocked this box with a single digit password. You can't achieve that in here though. I will show you that command in terminal a little bit later. So if you are looking for passwords shorter than eight characters, um, you'll need to use terminal for that. But uh, I'm using a single character. All right. so. If we decide to go this route here, the gear symbol, it says a real cryptic number or letters and all that stuff. If you decide to do this, my suggestion is to handwrite this thing down. A lot of people, when you generate auto passwords, um, you can have lots of things happening. So let me do this one more time. All right, single character. So as you can see, this may be a little bit difficult for someone to remember. That's why I would suggest handwriting it down if you're gonna use that. Now, if you are gonna use your own passwords, 
I'm going to hit cancel and do this again. So my current is a single digits. Now, what if I use anything shorter than eight? So I'm going to type in a five character password and repeat the same. It looks like it'll work, but I'll get a complaint box. It's too short. So how did I achieve a single digit? Well, again, it's done through terminal. I'll show you that in a minute. However, I can do this for Mary though, since Sam is the administrator of this computer. I can do this for Mary if I can, I can force her to have a single password by doing this. Single letter. Would I? No. I'm just showing you, you can do this. Okay. Sam, on the other hand, would not allow me to change the password anything shorter. So even at five, it, it still complained graphically. So how did I get around this issue? I used terminal. And a lot of your people before you run out the door and going, oh, I don't want to know anything about terminal. Can I just at least give you something to be comfortable with and have fun at the same time? Just to break the ice. Type in that. Cal. Yes, it's got today's uh, calendar on it, but you can also type in Cal space and put in a month, like February would be two, or you can type in FEB if you like. So I'm gonna think, I'm gonna put a space after that, so it's Cal space two space and a year. I'm gonna put 1967. I have a friend born in February of 1967, and that friend was born on the 15th. So if you put in stuff like this, he or she would have been born on a Wednesday. That's the calendar from 67. Just to have a little fun here. I'm going to punch up clear. And now um, when I show you this command, just don't arbitrarily punch in anything. So if you don't know anything about pseudo commands, super user do is an elevated privilege mode kind of commands. And in this case, I'm going to be changing a password for Sam. If you have never, uh, if you're fairly new to Linux, fairly new to Zorin, and you come from the Microsoft world, uh, so that's basically our user and the at symbol. And then this part is the name of the computer. All right. And then the dollar sign is just waiting for you to type stuff. So what I'm going to do is put in sudo super user do space pass wd password not the not spelling it out pass wd is a change password command sudo pass wd we do require an extra space and the name of the user in this case sam sam's current password is a single digit single character okay new password so uh, if i wanted to make it shorter than eight i can certainly do that when I start typing though, you're not going to see a thing on the screen. So I will just um, type in, let's make it uh, five characters. You're not going to see anything. I'm going to hit enter. It'll say password is shorter than eight. That's okay. I'm just going to continue. And I'll let you see that I changed the password briefly by open this box. Okay, authenticate it. All right, now I'm gonna use a single one. If you want, I'll type up clear to let you see this. Using the upper arrow key, I'm gonna type in the same command, sudo password sam. So in this case, his password is five digits or, yeah, it's five. Except um, now it says new password. If I do this completely from scratch, I'm going to close this and reopen that. Then I'll have to do this all over again, making that larger for you on the fly. All right. So what is the pseudo password currently for, for Sam? It's five digits, five letters, five digits. I'm using a single now. I'm using the, the, the letter A. It'll say bad password, password is palindrome. I will give you the definition of that word in a second if you don't know what that is. I'm still gonna use the letter A. Password has updated successfully. I'm gonna type in exit. 
and verify that with you by doing the same thing, opening up users and unlocking that with a single password A, because I can't. Would I do that normally? No, I certainly wouldn't. So what is that palindrome thing? Password is a palindrome. Well, it's defined as a sequence of letters, numbers, or characters that can be read in the same each direction, same in each direction. Since, this, the, the, since I used the letter A, the lowercase a, I was able to achieve that. Would I recommend it? No, I certainly would not. So, but again, you saw what I did in here. I could not use that when I went into here to do that in the uh, user's account. I could not change the password anything shorter than eight. Okay, so I'm gonna put in my single digit and again, I'm just gonna do three letters. By the way, if you try single letters, sometimes this will just start clocking and you'll have to probably log out if that gets into a loop. So I wouldn't recommend that single digit in here. You can certainly try it, but I think you'll have a problem. So even this is too short. So again, eight characters if you're using the graphical. If you want something shorter, you use the terminal command. That overrides that. You can do this for Mary though. The authentication for Mary can be done by setting the password for her. I'm gonna put punching an, an S in here. That took, because Mary is not an administrator account. All right, recap time. If you are wanting to have the user uh, in here with the auto logins, then you can do that. Okay, and uh, be careful about the removing of users, but anyways, auto logins, and is the computer gonna be leaving the premises of your home? And rethink that one, especially if you uh, did perform a short password like I just did, showed you how to do, I'd also rethink that, especially for computers leaving your house. Also, when you make short passwords, if they, if Mary is a child, they may take a good guess at it. You know, a lot of kids are pretty smart nowadays. Make yourself either, uh, if you are wanting to go below eight and you want to use terminal, um, make it something like at least four or five characters. That way it's a little harder for Mary to guess at that or whoever else is in your household. And yes, you can create more users. Standard or admin. Just follow the directions. Okay. Hopefully you found some of this useful. Thank you for watching.